You may be wondering why I have this big old fire extinguisher. And it's because today we're gonna be machining magnesium. Now we have powdered magnesium. If it ignites, it's gonna cause a flash fire. Now magnesium fires can be extremely dangerous and they can be put out with water or a normal red fire extinguisher. So if we ignite our magnesium today, we're gonna give it the D. That's a class D fire extinguisher. Now magnesium burns so hot that it can burn right through your work holding and even through your machine table. Not a good idea. And that is why you do not pour water on a magnesium fire. Now stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you exactly what happens if you let magnesium sit in water or water-based cooling. All right, so for this part, I wanna use this new chuck we have here. But to get it on our table, Shunk sent us this cool Vero S pallet. So it comes with four pull studs already in it, some nice handles, so let's put some holes in it. three holes drilled in our pallet. Now this chuck is super heavy, so I'm gonna go get the forklift to load it up inside our machine. All right, we got our part loaded up and now it's time to make some chips. Now, if you don't run magnesium often, and this is gonna be your first time, you need to make sure that you're properly set up for it because this can be a really dangerous process. So you see here, we have our class D fire extinguisher, which is specifically for metal fires. And we have that right here next to the machine. That way we can access it really quick if we need to. All right, this is burning down the Emco Mill 1200, take one. See how all these chips are like glitter? That's super dangerous because the smaller the chip is, the easier it's gonna ignite. Now normally we'd wanna run this in mineral oil or Blazer makes a coolant specific for this material and it's called BC37MG. All right, this is the tool that I'm really concerned about because we don't have through air on this machine and we're running dry, so the chips are gonna have to get out of the hole on their own. If they don't, it could create enough friction to actually ignite our piece of magnesium. All right, we got lucky. Now when you're running magnesium, one thing you wanna be very careful of, especially in this situation, is letting chips pile up. You don't wanna have piles of chips on your part because any piles of chips are potential fire hazards. So in between each operation, because we don't have coolant washing away our chips, I'm gonna go in and blow the chips off of the part and away from the chuck and away from the table. Now, a lot of you out there may be thinking that I'll just use the coolant that I already have in my machine. The problem is, is if you're using a water-based coolant, the chips that are soaking in that coolant are gonna be oxidizing and it's gonna be releasing hydrogen into your machine. Now, if you've ever seen the Hindenburg videos, then you'll know why hydrogen in enclosed spaces is a really bad idea when you're risking starting a fire. Another reason that you really don't wanna use water-based coolant is it's almost instantly gonna start corroding your part. Now this is another non-ideal scenario. We have all these chips building up inside of our part. So as the chips are being recut, they're getting hotter and hotter. Luckily, I know this toolpath is almost done. Whew, that was sketchy. So once again, we're gonna blow our chips off of our part, chuck and table. Less chips equals less fire. Now we're taking this drill all the way through our part. This is gonna give us a hole that we're able to probe for our second operation assuming we don't completely incinerate our parts. Now here we're going in with another drill. So again, we're in another risky operation where we're creating a lot of friction that could potentially heat up these chips so much that they spontaneously ignite. For those of you that aren't familiar with magnesium, it burns at thousands of degrees Celsius. So that means if our part actually ignites, it's gonna be hot enough to burn directly through our chuck, through our pallet system, and through our machine table. I will be quite pleased if I don't burn this machine to the ground the first part I run on it. Yes, feathers of destruction. 
Now, something else you want to try to do when running magnesium is you want to keep your chips as big as you possibly can. The bigger the chip, the harder it is to ignite. Now the nice thing about magnesium is it's super easy to machine. It's easier to machine than aluminum. The chip breaks real nice. The only problem with it is, again, the fire hazard. In aluminum, you can use almost infinite surface footage. In magnesium, if I'm going to be running a tool that I would normally run at, say, 10,000 RPM, I'm going to run it at about half of that. And that's just to cut down on friction and making sure that our tool's not rubbing rather than cutting. Now, you can see we're making chips that are so light, they're actually floating in the air. That's an additional level of hazard because now we have powdered magnesium where if it ignites, it's gonna cause a flash fire. Which brings me to our next point. If you have a class D fire extinguisher, that's great. But if you don't know how to use it, that's not so great. So make sure you familiarize yourself with your fire suppression equipment. Why is it yellow? Chris, I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're into our finishing passes. And again, because our chips are so tiny, it's creating a more increased fire hazard. Now, if we were running this with coolant, none of this would be a problem. All we'd have to do is program it just like it was an aluminum part and go. All right, so every surface that you see here now has been roughed and then finished. We didn't catch anything on fire, so that's awesome because I wasn't too confident that we were gonna get to that point. Now it's time to take our part out, cut our soft jaws for op two, and then run the second operation. Now, we are the national distributors for EMCO, so take a look at titansofcnc.com if you're interested in buying one of these machines. And speaking of EMCO, Here's Andreas all the way from Austria, setting up our new Hyperturn 65. All right, now that we're done with Op 1, I'm gonna show you guys why we don't put magnesium in water or in water-based coolant. So what we have here is just a bowl of tap water, and we're gonna sit our part in it for a few hours and just see what happens. What we should end up seeing is corrosion forming on the clean metal and bubbles forming, which is hydrogen, separating from the magnesium. All right, now that we've finished our first operation, I need to make a set of soft jaws for our second operation. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to create a set of soft jaws using Cloud NC's soft jaw designer. So you can see I have some blank jaws modeled here, and I have our part modeled in and already in position. Now when I open the soft jaw designer, it wants me to pick my part, pick my jaw stock, pick my spindle direction, and my jaw opening direction. Now it wants to know the size of my jaws, so six inches, by one inch, by two inch, and the gap between them is 1.6375. My jaw position in the plane I have selected is at zero. And we don't really need a corner relief, so I'm gonna just tell it 1,000. Now, if I tell it to do its thing, you can see that that only took a matter of seconds, and if I hide my part, it's already created our soft jaws for us. Now you might remember me talking about how CloudNC recognized the fact that it was gonna create a jig lock scenario and it actually created these flats here rather than following the contour of the part inwards. Now that's something that I didn't know it was capable of so I was really surprised when I saw it do that. It's a super awesome tool and it makes your life creating soft jaws super easy. All right, now we've been getting a lot of questions about how good CloudNC's cam assist really is. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to go from absolutely nothing to having a fully programmed part with no intervention from me. So let's have a look. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our machine group and we're gonna set up our stock setup. Now I've already selected a cylinder, which is the stock before my first operation. It wants to know what my master model is, which is my part and what my work holding is. And in this case, I picked the three jaws because that's where I don't want collisions. So within Mastercam, I'm gonna open Cam Assist. For the first operation, it wants to know what plane I'm gonna use. In this case, it'll be top. Ask me to select avoidance geometries, but we don't really need to do that because we did that in our machine setup. How strong is our work holding? In this case, it's gonna be excellent. For our second operation, we're gonna use the OP2 plane that I created. And again, our work holding will be excellent because we have soft jaws. So now all I gotta do is tell it to do its thing, and we sit back and wait for a minute. Titan has no idea how hard I work during the day. All right, so right there you can see that it already created 66 operations, which would have taken me probably a couple of hours to do. 
but it did it in a matter of about two or three minutes. Now it's going through and it's just regenerating all the operations and that's gonna take it another minute or two. And at that point, we're able to go in and swap out tools that we wanna use a different tool for, or we're able to optimize some of our tool paths. All right, and you can see that it did a very nice job of creating our first operation. It didn't gouge anything. There may be things, like I said, that we wanna go in and tweak, but we know that it'll at least create the geometry that we expected it to. Now for our second operation, I'm gonna go into our stock setup and I'm going to select the stock model that the second operation begins with. Now we can verify our second operation. So you can see that it did these rails here side to side and kind of wrapped around to create the fillet. I want to do that a little bit differently, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time tweaking this file to be what I, as a programmer, want to see. All right, so we let this sit here for about five hours, and let's see what we got. So you can see all those bubbles, and that's caused by the oxidization process with the magnesium in the water, and a lot of those bubbles are going to be hydrogen. And this is why you don't want your part to sit in water-based coolants overnight because it builds up hydrogen and that can start an explosive fire. All right, so if we take a look at the top of our part that wasn't submerged, it still has a very nice surface finish. But as we look at the part that was submerged underwater, it is terribly corroded. This is why you don't wanna let any water-based coolants or water sit on your magnesium parts. All right, so now our soft jaws are done. We're gonna take our part in there and make sure that the part fits. Now, something that I wanna point out is that CloudNC and Cam Assist actually did an excellent job with their soft jaw designer. If you take a look at this part, these two ears here, we're gonna create a jig lock situation where if I put the part in the vise, I wouldn't have been able to open it or close it. So Cam Assist recognized that and gave me these nice flats in our jaws that prevent the jig lock situation. Good tight fit, which is exactly what we wanted. And we are ready to rumble on Op 2. Yes! Now normally with this drill, I wouldn't peck. I would just dive straight into the material. And if we were running coolant, that's what I'd be doing. But since we're running dry, I wanna make sure that we give the friction a little bit of a break so that the magnesium doesn't overheat and ignite. All right, so our parts all machined, we got all of our pockets, all of our drilled holes, and all of our profiling. So you can see the machining magnesium really isn't a big deal, so long as you follow specific safety protocols. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys again soon. Yes, I didn't start a fire!